So looking up here, we've got one of our cameras for our clean grain system. This is what Combine Advisor is gonna to use to make decisions on sample cleanliness for foreign material, as well as cracked and broken grain. So of course for it to see and do the best job it can, just keep this lens clean. Uh, like glass cleaner works great, but just make sure it can see clearly so it can make the best decisions possible. And same goes for your moisture sensor here. After it's taking those samples, there's a little auger in here that's gonna put everything back into the clean grain elevator. Uh, just take these pins out and make sure everything's clean and free of debris so everything can flow at a smooth and consistent rate through that moisture sensor. Yep, and sometimes what will happen is if you're in the cab and you notice your moisture isn't changing anymore, or you're getting air codes for uh, a high moisture motor uh, uh, amp draw, what can happen sometimes is if you do get a chunk of cob or something like that, it will get wedged in this auger and it'll stall that auger out. When that happens, then your moisture won't change. And if you have combat advisor, you're not gonna see any changing in your camera, your vision on your combat advisor as well. Um, to clean that out, like Nick said, simply pull the pins, remove the auger, um, and put it back in. Another thing to point out, review to most, but, uh, make sure we, we're maintaining proper clean grain and return elevator tension. Um, as Nick pointed out earlier, this machine is a 760, so it does have a different return system than what a class uh, seven or class eight or a class nine would have. Um, however, the tension is still the same. Uh, make sure that you're loosening your bolts on your flange, letting it slide down, as far as tension goes, you want the chain tight, but you want it still loose enough that you can slide the links side to side on that bottom sprocket. If you are out of adjustment, which you see a lot, you'll walk up to a machine and you'll see either one of these bent up. What happens typically then is the amount of adjustment is out. Somebody tried to over adjust something that couldn't adjust. Uh, if that is the case, if you're out of adjustment, simply bring it up remove a half link, remove a connector link, uh, put it back together and slide it down. The crane grain elevator, the reason this is so important is a lot of your yield is based off of how the seed impacts the impact plate on the yield mod, on the, on the yield sensor. So as a paddle wears, because that paddle's getting shorter, then now your distance from the paddle to the yield sensor is getting greater. So as you adjust this down, another thing that you should be doing is recalibrating the yield monitor as well. Um, so that is changing how, telling the computer how the grains impacted the impact plate so you can get a proper uh, uh, yield reading in the cab. And a great example, if it's too loose, you know, the paddles are, are should be perpendicular running up the elevator here. If that chain's loose, it can't hold that paddle with all the heavy grain on it quite perpendicular. It may drop and you could see a little bit of trickle by and that's gonna throw off your yield map. All the grain will eventually get up there, but not at the right times. And that's how it can throw off your yield in a big way. So important to keep this tensions not overly tight, not overly loose. Um, a, a general rule of thumb is it's okay to have a little bit of play side to side on that chain, but you don't want any up and down. If there's any up and down play, you're too loose on your chain, you need to adjust here. And that goes for your clean grain system or your tailing system. And <clears throat> this adjustment should be something that we're checking every day. So every day before you start in the field, open that up, check the chain tension, it's pretty quick. Loosen the bolts, drop it down, yeah. tighten it up. Reach in here, give it a quick feel, yep. and know if you're good for the day. One quick thing, sometimes it gets overlooked, and if you do overlook it, you'll know about it pretty quick, but your cob deflector. When we're in corn, we wanna make sure we put this down. That way, cobs aren't getting flung back into our chaffer by the chopper drum. In soybeans, we wanna leave this up so that opening is as big as possible, allowing the maximum amount of material into the chopper chamber. So switching between corn and soybeans, quick, easy, but also important adjustment to make.